Let's make over the steamer trunk with Roycicle decoupage paper and screen stenciling. First step, measuring and cutting. Make it easy on yourself and get a quilter's mat. I love using this to make really nice straight lines with a rotary cutter. Always cut your paper a little larger than the space that you need it for. That way you can come back and make creases so you can get a perfect fit. Either going back and using the quilter's mat or scissors. Now it's time to cut the sides and get started on the decoupage. I am using one hour enamel in clear for my decoupage medium. I'm going to start by putting it on that top area and then I'm going to use the saran wrap down the middle and then smooth it out to the edges. I still have a little bit extra on that edge so I'll have to come back and trim that off later. Because it's going over a canvas fabric, it is soaking up the product pretty good. So I'm making sure that I put on a good amount before I put on the decoupage paper. Those little corners did not want to go down, so I grabbed a mechanical pencil to get those pesky little corners in place. Now you'll notice that I did not paint it white before adding the decoupage paper. I wanted the patina and age to come through on those white crosses. Okay, let's do this side. I'm going to do a little anchor strip on that top and smooth that down. This is really gonna help make sure that you don't get a ton of wrinkles. Now I'm gonna come back with my mechanical pencil and just score the edges. This is gonna really help where I need to sand. Ooh, my favorite part. Now it's time to grunge it up. I love the combination of Java glaze and the one hour enamel uh, jet black for aging anything. So it can be on this, tr on this trunk for papers, but also um, anything that you want to look aged. It's the perfect combination. Just using an artist's brush, a paper towel, and a little bit of water with my Mr. Bottle to really dab and give it that aged look where the dirt would hang up in all of the corners and then putting a little bit more on the edges of the crosses. Next up, now we're gonna have a little bit of fun. Let's take this landscape art and use it as texture. So I loved the colors and the texture in this paper, but I wanted it to look steampunk. So we're using it as patina for this project. So I'm using my mechanical pencil just to score around all of the little uh, buckles and things. It makes it a lot easier to peel off um, the excess paper. This is gonna give it a more torn, organic look. Speaking of tearing, I'm gonna tear this paper. I'm looking for the colors that match what I already got going on. And we're just gonna put those in there um, around that buckle. This is gonna be way easier and more wrinkle-free than trying to cut around that hardware. Okay, let's move on to this section. Doing the same thing, using my mechanical pencil to uh, trace around the hardware and then rip off the excess. The only place I'm using the scissors is on that bottom edge. This area can get a little tricky. I'm just cutting off scraps like I did before and then tucking it in using product to smush it into place and then taking more scraps and just tucking it under there. Very technical process. Now that it's dry, I'm gonna come back and very carefully rip off 
all the extra paper around those edges. I'm gonna add one more layer of the clear top coat. This is really gonna help when we go back to shade and add drips and patina. Now I'm coming back in with that black paint, my artist brush and the Java glaze and my mister bottle, getting into all those cracks and even on those wood slats. You know I had to find a place to put some copper, so I'm adding some copper glaze to the hardware and letting it drip down. I'm also adding some turquoise patina down the side panel so that it will coordinate with the middle decoupage section. Here's a closer look at the copper glaze and turquoise strips that I did and now it's starting to just come all together as one cohesive piece. Now let's do the other side. If you get a spot that is a little bit too much, you can always come back with your finger and some extra water and just get it moving, giving it a more organic feel. Now that we have it all perfect, this can be the most nerve wracking part is putting a stencil and not really knowing if it's going to turn out. I love the flexibility of these screen stencils. They are perfect for paneling. You can get it right up in that edge. Make sure that if you are doing this over the decoupage paper that it is completely dry. You don't want it to rip off like it did for me. Whoopsies! With a little bit more black paint and some Java glaze, don't you worry, we can fix this. See? There you go. All better. You can hardly even tell. Let's add a couple more gears to this trunk. This brass stencil paste by Redesign with Prima is the perfect pop of copper over the moody background. You can find it in my Amazon affiliate link in the description. Now for our last step, we're going to seal the wood and the metal with this Wise Owl Sab. This is really going to accentuate the metal patina and all that drippy goodness. Tobacco flower, the perfect scent for this steamer trunk. Man, does it smell good. Okay, are you ready to see her all done? This one I'm keeping for myself. This is going to be our coffee table in our living room. I'm so happy with how it turned out. What do you think? Leave a comment below. You can find all the products on our website at ignitefurnishingsco.com and the links in the descriptions. I want to hear from you. Please like, share, and comment, and subscribe for more fun tutorials. Thanks for watching.